We are now at the master level and sometimes the question comes up, so what's a lineman? Path to master. What does it look like? What does it mean to be a master electrician? How do you transfer that? What, what, is it posted? Is it permanent? Is it temporary? Is it by state, city, county, country? What is a master electrician? That is the question. All right. <laughs> I think back in the olden days, it probably meant you were like 60 years old and you've been doing it for four or five decades, right? But there's a very specific definition and it is you have a master's license that has been bequeathed upon you by the authority that has jurisdiction, the AHJ. In Indiana, the AHJ is every city, town, and county. Not all of them have a licensing process. Only the, I'm gonna say towns, like population of 10,000 and above, smaller towns tend to, that just gets squishy. We're licensed across the state of Indiana, not by state, but in each and every jurisdiction because we travel for renewable energy. So right now, I hold about 20 to 25 licenses, individual licenses. In many states, it's by state. There's one license, it covers the state. Here's the deal. When I went to get licensed, I had to present three letters of recommendations from customers. I had to present 16,000 hours of experience, documented work experience. I had to present personal identification, full resume, in order to go and appear before the board. The board is a governing body constituted of local officials as well as other licensed electricians. Upon satisfactory completion of an interview with the board, a licensed applicant then becomes permitted to go and take a four hour 100 question test that will vary by jurisdiction but in Marion County Indianapolis the Thompson Prometric is the test of choice and that is the length of the test the unfortunate news is this the master electrician licensing test has a less than 14 percent first time pass rate. That's right, it's fairly intimidating. It's an open book test. It'll be based upon a specific cycle of the National Electrical Code. After receiving your test results, if you've received a 70% or better, you've passed, you go back before the board, they scare you into never selling your license and all of the liability and responsibility that you have as a license holder. As soon as you walk out of that room, you finish the paperwork, you sign off in about a dozen places, and you receive a personal license. That personal license in our jurisdiction is actually worth almost nothing but a pay raise until it is assigned to a sponsor company. In this case, I am the license holder and the owner of the sponsor company, Jefferson Electric. And so my personal license is combined with a corporate business license a certificate of insurance and a bond and when all that is complete and all that paperwork is dialed in I am now permitted and any authorized agents I assign to pull permits and perform work it is my responsibility to supervise that work so if something burns to the ground it's not actually probably that apprentice who's in the courtroom it's me as the license holder because I bear the responsibility for ensuring safety and quality. So how does one find out all of these plethora of licensing requirements? Easy answer, call your city building department and ask to speak to the secretary of the licensing board. He or she has all the answers and they'll give them to you in a well-documented, simplified format. What if I'm not the business owner but I'm the license holder? What happens? How do I transfer that license to a new company if I change employment or how do I transfer that license out of state to for you know project X Y and Z whatever the case may be here's the deal it's different all across the country there's not one uniform experience but generally speaking if you have been licensed that credential will transfer from one jurisdiction to another seamlessly unless that's a heavy union town and they lock up and restrict. See, I've got about 25 licenses, but I've only actually been required to test about 10 times. The other licenses have been transfers from one jurisdiction to the other. You get them communicating with each other, they transfer the paperwork, it doesn't go through the business or myself, 
It's jurisdiction to jurisdiction. You want to make sure that if you're transitioning away from a company, you remove your personal license. You decouple it from that company so you're no longer the liable individual for the permits that are being pulled and the jobs that are being completed for the former company. You have to transfer that license out and to a new company. Each license holder can only be the license holder for one company in a given jurisdiction. That is a limitation. Now, when I started Jefferson Electric, I was not a licensed electrician. I actually hired a team member, a W2 on staff, who carried the license for us until I obtained my own master's license. Typically, most of the master electricians that I know are actually business owners. So, here's what typically happens in a company. If you are the business owner, you've probably worked from the ground up, you've probably become a master electrician that's probably uh, took place shortly before you went out on your own and started your own company. And so now you're the business owner, the license holder, and you have electricians coming up underneath you. So you are supervising the work. Most of your day is spent as a business owner. Potentially, if you're a small business owner, that means you are HR, you are potentially the bookkeeper, marketer, you are the business administrator, all right? You're the estimator in the field. You are busy, busy, busy. That's often what it looks like. A master electrician's primary responsibility is to hold the license and supervise the work and then they often by default end up doing everything else too. So at Jefferson Electric, we want all of our electricians to grow up and become master electricians. We will pay for the license, we will pay for the time and training and education to get them there because it is such a powerful tool. When you walk in to perform an estimate, when you are leading a job, when you are communicating with a customer and they have questions and concerns, and the telephone operator who's picked up the phone is able to say, let me transfer you to a master electrician who is able to answer that question for you. That's powerful. That is a differentiator. That is not common. Most companies have one master electrician. Right now, Jefferson Electric has three, and we have three other guys that we're elevating to that standard, hopefully within the next 12 months. We want to be locked and loaded, providing the highest value at a corresponding rate. So you're a master electrician. It doesn't mean you know all things about the code. You probably still operate within a certain segment of the very broad electrical industry. Literally, you might be a specialist in less than 10% of the overall industry. You might be a residential specialist. You might be a commercial specialist, you might be with an industrial company, or you might be in a specialty like renewable energy or telecommunications or the list goes on. There's so many. You might be uh, medical. Medical is kind of its own field and arena. It's not typically combined with commercial. It's often separated, isolated. It's, there's a lot of specialized code about medical. So the question is, have you reached a salary cap? Have you reached a destination or maybe even a dead end? Now, some considerations. If you're a residential master electrician, you're probably at the low end of the pay scale. Typically, the pay scale increases from residential to commercial to industrial and then specialists that operate in different segments. Like maybe it's data and communications or maybe it's renewable energies. Those types of specialists are gonna plug in different places and often their earning power is gonna be dictated not by their segment within the industry, but it's gonna be dictated by the quality of their company, by the benefits package, by some of those other things that are gonna bring that overall compensation up to $100,000 a year or more. Now, consideration for you. After you're arrived at Master Electrician, you might still be in a technician role. That means where you are responsible for work execution at a technical level. And that's cool and that's great. But if you want to elevate that earning power, often the transition comes to a job change within the company from lead electrician, who is a master, to senior director of operations or chief operating officer or some bit of responsibility that elevates the status within the company or another company that is going to increase your earning power and that is also a path forward for you now question we've talked about apprentice journeyman in past videos 
We are now at the master level and sometimes the question comes up, so what's a lineman? A lineman is not any one of those things. It's a utility worker. That is an industrial utility electrical distribution worker that's not an on-premises electrician. The training pathway is different. The tooling is different. The employer is different. It's a totally other, but the earning capacity of a lineman at great risk to himself because the voltage and power at that level is incredibly hazardous. The earning power of a lineman is often $150,000 a year and is combined with working during severe weather and lots of travel time. Now one of, in my opinion, the most interesting ways to increase your earning power once you become a master electrician is to start your own business. That comes with an elevated, escalated set of risks and the potential for corresponding rewards. And we're gonna talk about that in the next video. Subscribe to Electric Pro Academy for real skills to make real money.